Uh, once again, I want to uh, thank Steve for coming in and uh, giving us the opportunity to do this. Uh, it hasn't been that long since we chatted, but uh, you know, there's a few things that's in, in place right now and a uh, few things that have happened since uh, last time we chatted and, and obviously some things that's coming up. Uh, first of all, I just want to uh, certainly thank the, uh, the community and those who, uh, who gave stuff for our uh, Staff Appreciation Week. Uh, it was greatly appreciated um, and you know, certainly was well enjoyed by, uh, by the staff. Uh, obviously, since we last chatted, the um, uh, midterm exams have, have gone ahead and, and obviously are completed. Uh, for students in grades uh, 7 to 12 and the report cards have gone home um, and while I don't have no, none of the analysis in front of me right now but uh, I was certainly very pleased with the results uh, from that I think we have uh, I think there's 51 students in, in 7 to 12 and I think 32 or 33 of them were actually on the principal's honor roll which is 85 and over so I mean that's fantastic it's a very high percentage and you're looking at about 67 68 percent of our students uh, with 85 and over uh, there was a few more were very close to 85 uh, so I mean uh, um, again a job well done by our students certainly want to uh, uh, congratulate them on, on their work and uh, you know with exams you know you're, you're getting into junior high uh, grade seven is the first time doing exams uh, and then obviously with grade eight now they're into their second year and, and as you go from there and you know certainly if uh, if students are not pleased with their report card then uh, that, that's a, a conversation that they, they first of all need to have with themselves and uh, you know as we offer a, a free tutoring service here in school uh, there's free tutoring service for math and English and science on CDLI uh, you know we're living in a very small community where uh, certain students can see their teachers after school uh, there's classmates there's a lot of opportunity for extra help if students need that but uh, in some cases, we're finding with some students, they're not willing to take that initiative uh, to do the extra work or get the extra help. And, and, and again, we can talk as much as we want, but uh, you know, just want to put that out there again uh, for the parents and, and for students that uh, you know, we're certainly here to help them and uh, to certainly uh, prepare them for the final exam. So if they're not pleased with the report card right now, there is one more report card coming up in April, the final one obviously in June with, with their final exam. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, talking about report cards, um, on March the 10th, this coming Friday, uh, the K-6 to report cards will go home. Um, this is the last report card for K-6 to until the June one. And again, just a reminder to everyone that uh, for 7 to 12, there are four report cards in a year. And for K-6, to there are three report cards. And again, that is the Department of Education policy. Uh, it's not our policy. Um, and right now as well, for, for, for 7 to 12, with PowerSchool, um, they, they can check their, their grades at any time. So when they go on right now to find out what they got in any of their courses, that's the grade they got right to date. So in one sense, report cards are certainly are, are good and whatnot. But they're not as necessary as what they were in 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 past uh, in past years, uh, and that's because of power school as well. K to six, that's a little bit different because power school is not set up for K to six students and parents uh, to go in and see how their child is doing. Um, and again, just a reminder for open house for uh, K to six parents will go in on March the 13th and the 14th. Since we've also last chatted, we've had our stand up the Boolean day. Uh, we took a full day for that. Um, Mrs. Penny, the uh, the CYN, along with Valine, uh, and and the funding for that day came from the ELP committee. So, I certainly want to thank uh, those people and those groups, um, and and for all of our students for a, a day that seemed to be uh, well enjoyed. Um, K to six students uh, were, were were well involved. Uh, seemed to really enjoy it. Some things, uh, when you get a little older, get a little higher grades uh, in 7 to 12, they may feel that some of the stuff is probably not appropriate for them, but um, it, it, you know, we, we can all learn lessons from what's happening there, and uh, we all know the issues of bullying, we all know, uh, um, um, you know, it, it is happening, unfortunately, in, in all of our schools, and, uh, you know, we are doing what we can uh, to, to combat that. Uh, it's, it's easier said than done. Um, but as I've said uh, here many times, that you know, any any questions, any concerns that parents may have, uh, by all means, give us a call. Uh, if we don't know uh, what's happening, um, then there's not a lot. Obviously, there's nothing we can do. The other thing we're finding as well is that I mean, there's a lot of things that happen outside of our school, whether it's weekends, nighttime, whether it's as things happen on the playground, uh, you know, an X number of, of areas and things could be happening that gets brought into the school, and that, and that creates another. 
uh, I guess level difficulty for us on, on how to deal with that. Um, but uh, you know, again, something that that we were working uh, working through, and uh, you know, along with Mrs. Penny as a guidance counselor, um, you know, uh, we're, we're again we're here to do what we can. So certainly keep that in mind. Just want to remind everyone again that uh, the contact information now we, we we have a little more. I think I repeated this at our at the last time we did this, but. You know, we still keep uh, updating uh, Channel 62 and Channel 10. You know, sometimes Channel 62 is down, and we uh, we certainly apologize for that. But that you know, that is technology. Um, but I mean, we're we're also using email now for parents a little more and, and guardians. Uh, there's also a, a, a Virgil Academy Facebook page, so we're finding more ways to make that contact. Um, and and if for some reason the parents are not being contacted, or if, if anything's happening there, again, let us know. Um, Right now, all, all information should be into a uh, uh, contact list for our emails for parents and guardians. But again, if, if people are not getting stuff, uh, then, then certainly let us know that. Um, you may have noticed that if you've been calling the school, um, after I think four or five rings, uh, you're getting a recording. It acts as my voice for the recording. And then it tells you to select, uh, I think it's zero for the secretary, and then uh, I forget the other numbers, uh, but it will be for myself, uh, for Mr. Ayer, and for Mrs. Penny. Um, we're still having difficulty, or not, we're having difficulty, but there is an issue with the phone setup. Uh, we're waiting for a technician to come back. Uh, what's going to happen in, in hopefully the very near future is that whenever you call the school, you will automatically get the automatic uh, uh, um, voice message, which tells you to select person you want to chat to or you want to leave a message to or whatnot and you will have an option of doing that as well so if you you call the school you want to speak to me if, if I'm not in the office whether I'm teaching or if I'm, I'm out of school for whatever reason uh, you can leave a message on, uh, on my message manager and we will certainly get back to you as soon as we can but right now when you call um, Don uh, will will be picking up the phone and that's the part that's that's not fixed and we hopefully uh, that we'll have that done uh, real soon um, coming up, we have uh, our next closeout is now scheduled for March the 17th. So going back to the contact list, uh, I, I emailed all parents on that. Um, and I think Mr. Ayer will be putting that up on 62 if it's not there already and also on the Facebook page. But uh, that's our fourth closeout. So obviously no school for students and that's a Friday on March 17th. Uh, no school for students on that day. Uh, teachers will have a workshop uh, here in school. We have one more closeout. Uh, that's... that's uh, to be done before the end of the school year. Actually, it's supposed to be done before the end of March, but uh, that may go somewhat into April, so I'm not, uh, I don't have an answer, obviously, when that final closeout will be. But again, once I find out, uh, I'll certainly let the community, the parents that know, as soon as possible. Um, just two or three other things uh, um, that have come to our attention um, and, and there's been, I guess, some discussions with, with parents and whatnot in the community. Um, and we've had a couple of phone calls on it. Uh, one is about the Bengals, and I just want to explain our, our Bengals throughout the year. Bengals is the, uh, is the only fundraiser that the school has itself. There's other fundraisers throughout, like the grads are having a, a bunch of different things. Uh, if our sporting team, you go back to September, October when they went to Fairland, uh, they do different uh, things for, uh, for uh, fundraising. But right now, uh, for the school itself, we have three bingos. Uh, money collected from that will go to our uh, PBS program, uh, Positive Behavior Supports. And what we're doing is taking the money there. Um, I've mentioned before here in the past uh, year or two, um, we have a token store for students in K-6, to so as they collect tokens, uh, they can use their tokens to purchase items in, in the token store. Um, last year was the first time for 712 we started the Action Auction program, and we want to continue that as well. So the money from the three bingos for the school itself uh, goes directly to that. End of the year, if there's some extra money left there, uh, I mean, that's money that we can put towards school supplies. Uh, we can, you know, in past years we've used bingo money to purchase uh, uh, smart board projectors, and last year we purchased two that cost us uh, was over three thousand dollars. So, um, you know, 
right now, like so the, the the biggest thing is go towards the PBS program, but we may use a bit of that money if there's if there's any left over uh, towards some other items for our school. So that's three for the school. There is two for the snack program, and that goes directly towards the, the uh, our snack program, uh, whatever money uh, um, is collected there. And the nice thing about that one is that that is uh, that is matched by the Kids Eat Smart Foundation. So. We average anywhere between nine hundred to eleven hundred dollars on bingles. Um, so you know, if you're looking at let's say an average of thousand dollars there for our snack program, that's two thousand uh, dollars, and it's matched by the Kids Eat Smart. If we need more funding for our snack program, uh, so that's four thousand um, dollars. And again, we 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 push students um, to hopefully sell their bingo cards for those five. Beyond that, the the grads have three bingos, and that's goes again directly towards the graduation um, and there's two more and I think this is where probably some of the concerns were um, it, we sell or we ask students to sell bingo cards for the rec committee uh, they get just everybody gets two packs versus three for the school bingos and, and the, um, the snack program bingo and the reason for the rec committee bingo and we were asked this about I'm going to say about three or four years ago um, Throughout the winter months, obviously, we, we uh, as a school, we make use of the, the arena. Miss um, Batcher, as a phys ed teacher, and other phys ed, phys ed teachers in the past, uh, bring our students to the arena uh, for skating, for broom ball, for, for whatnot. Uh, and the rec committee have, uh, actually, they give us a deal on the rental. So it's, and I believe it's still half price of what it normally is. So I think right now it's an $80 rental, so they charge us 40 so in the meantime, because again, like I said, we, we may use that probably 10, 12, 15, maybe more times in that run of a year. Um, so to help them with the cost of that, uh, we asked them to sell bingo cards for their two bingos. Now, that one is completely voluntary. If, if you don't want to sell bingo cards for the right committee, that is certainly your option. Again, for the schools, uh, bingo and, uh, and the, um, uh, the SNAP program, we encourage people to do so. Um, I think the other issue this year was that we were kind of in about five or six weeks. I think it was like there was like three bingos that was tied in with the school. Uh, one, the school itself. I think there was a grad one, if I'm not mistaken. I think there was the rec committee one. So it was almost like felt like every week for three or four weeks that uh, bingos were, were going home, and, and that's unfortunate. Uh, and we, you know, we, we try to, to spread it as, as much as possible, but when, like I said, when you tie in with 10 bingos in, in, in our school in one of a year, sometimes a little tough to, to get, uh, let's say, one a month if you want to average it that way. So if there's a, any further concerns with, with the bingos, uh, by all means, give us a call and we'll, we'll certainly uh, do what we can to help you with that. Um, one other thing, uh, obviously, as uh, we're all aware right now, um, the school bus do not make a lunchtime bus run. And I, I, uh, I know I sent an email to parents, and I just want to take, uh, uh, again, a minute or two to explain that. Due to full day kindergarten, which started this September pass, uh, no bus contracts, uh, whether it's bus, uh, school bus uh, um, contracts of their own, or for private contractors, uh, are doing lunch on runs anymore. Uh, Scott Strickland is the uh, the owner of Gateway, and, and that's a contract for our bus, uh, and he, he's living in, in Port of Bass. He is allowed, up to this point this year, he's allowed uh, the bus run lunch times to, to continue, but he's actually losing money on that. In past years, um, when kindergarten students obviously went home at lunchtime, that's what happened here every day, he was given extra money for standard there to to do that extra bus run which we also include every other student as well I know in, in students were paying uh, I'm not too sure if it was 50 cents each way or whatnot and sometimes that became an issue of, of staying collecting the money and, and whatnot not saying people didn't pay but it, it just became a bit of an issue so what Scott Strickland has done is he, he has stopped uh, the lunchtime bus run and he's got every right to do that because it's my understanding that no school in the province right now as of today I'll say uh, has a lunchtime bus run. Like I said we were fortunate enough that we did have it for five or six months this year. Uh, personally I would love to have seen that to continue uh, and start that in the new year but again that, that's out of my control and it's out of the board control that this is with the contractor. Um, so right now the issue becomes obviously is is what happens lunchtime if students don't have a ride. Um, bigger schools will say bigger communities, excuse me, in, in a province, 
they have a cafeteria, so uh, I mean, students stay for lunch. They've been doing that for years. Um, they, they have a catering system set up and, and whatnot. Obviously, we don't have a cafeteria. Uh, so I mean, the only thing we have is a canteen, and let's be honest, it's, it's, it, we don't sell enough in the canteen to really have a, as a lunch menu, we'll say. But right now, if parents or guardians have any concerns with uh, rides at lunchtime for students who normally take the bus, because that's the students that we're talking about, uh, students who've, who have not taken the bus, uh, they always add away at home. Um, you know, if, if that's an issue, let us know because we are responsible for students, um, you know, bus students from, you know, 8.30, quarter to nine in the morning until three o'clock. So, I mean, that do include lunchtime uh, uh, as well. So, if parents um, cannot bring, uh, pick up their child uh, for whatever reason, um, you know, I would appreciate it if we know ahead of time, we'll say, um, and, and if your child wants to bring a bag lunch to school, uh, they have the right to remain in, in school. And as teachers, it's, it's our responsibility to supervise those students during lunchtime. Uh, that was not explained in the email that went out, and it was just, just too much, and I waited for this to do so. Um, but that, that's, that's where that's too. So, I mean, we'll, we'll certainly do whatever we can to alleviate the frustration. And I know there, there, there will be frustrations, and... You know, if, if it's like if there's one or two kids, they may not want to stay in school. So, I mean, I, I certainly understand all that. But uh, as I've already stated, there's not a lot we can do right now. Um, but like I said, going forward, if, if, if that's what you want your child to stay in school for lunchtime, uh, certainly let us know um, because most of our teachers do go home for lunch. But now if, if, if they are on duty for that lunch lunch hour or 45 minutes that's there, uh, then we certainly need to let uh, give them an, uh, uh, an heads up as well. Um, so what, what I'm asking is that like if your child's staying for lunch, I'd appreciate if we knew that like the day before or whatnot, or, or if, if is this going to happen five days a week, that's fine as well. Uh, but not to call us at 11.30 and say my child's staying for lunch uh, at 12 o'clock. Um, it, it just want to, uh, like I said, just alleviate that kind of thing. And uh, like I said, it, it's it's going to be growing pains as we go forward, but uh, hopefully over the next uh, next couple of weeks that, that uh, this will kind of, uh, um, you know, fall into place and uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll certainly do what we can for all of our students. Um, just a couple of other things. I've had a couple of conversations with various parents uh, actually this year and, and, and actually going back the past couple of years about cell phones in school. Um, excuse me, it's... Um, Going back, I guess, five or six years ago, we, we had a, a policy in place where phones were, were not permitted in school at all. Um, and then we decided to allow phones in school, um, and students would, would be permitted to use those at uh, you know, permission of the teacher. Right now, you know, um, I, I can't sit there and say that, that that's going perfect and, and there's no issues. I mean, uh, there, is, there is some issues with it. some students. Uh, probably texting and probably uh, doing some things with their cell phone that they shouldn't be doing during school time. Um, over the next couple of weeks, uh, we're, we're going to be looking at uh, reevaluating that policy of the cell phones. Personally, uh, right now, I, I, I don't see us just banning cell phones in school. Um, that's not going to solve our problems. Students need to be educated. I mean, we go back to the bullying issue. I mean, uh, um, the, the internet, the Instagram, the, the Facebook, I mean, that's all become an issue in our school. Again, a lot of things happen outside of school. Yes, uh, some things certainly could be happening during school, um, and, and, and cell phones and, and the iPads and those kind of things are, are certainly creating some concerns there. Um, but we're, 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 like I said, we're, we're going to try to re revamp our policy on that. Um, and, and once we do, I'll certainly be, uh, I'll let you know about what our plan is. Students will know, obviously, probably before I, I, I uh, do the interview again. But uh, just, just to let everyone know that we're, we're trying to deal with, uh, with the issues with, with the cell phones. And um, like I said, I mean, we need to educate our students. I mean, parents need to educate them about the, the use of, of um, social media. Uh, and, and as a school, we are doing that as well. I've mentioned here a couple times in the past, uh, even this year and in past years as well, that we're doing a, a digital citizenship program with all students in our school. And again, that consists of three lesson plans for, for every class throughout the year. Um, that's been developed by the school board uh, and Department of Education. And uh, you know, it, it's teaching students the, the proper way of, of, uh, of using social media. 
Is that sinking in? Uh, I'm going to say no. Um, you know, some of our students are not um, listening to uh, what's, what they should be doing and should not be doing with social media. And, and I'm going to even go so far as to say that some of our parents are not, are not doing what, what, what should be done. And, and if, student, if, if we're telling students one thing, they're going home and seeing their parents or posting things online, um, that I'm going to say it's inappropriate. But, well, you know, the kids are going to listen to their parents probably more than what they're going to listen to us. So, you know, it's something that we all need, need to, to work together. I mean, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of information been coming across, uh, whether it's in the news or whatnot, that, you know, parents need to be checking on their child. Um, and, and what are they doing? I mean, uh, Mrs. Penny had online, uh, or sorry, on Channel 62, I believe, last year about the 10 different apps uh, that parents need to be aware of that that the child child is using, and even in in the past uh, couple of weeks, I've been told that there's apps where you can eye things in your phones, and and so if a parent goes look at a child's phone, uh, it's not there. So I mean, uh, and I, I know very little about social media. I know very little about technology. Uh, I I can email and I can text and 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 search the internet. Outside of that, I don't know a lot. I don't use Facebook. Uh, I don't. I've never used Instagram. So a lot of this stuff is certainly very, uh, is new to me. Um, so, and again, we'll, we'll just end off with, with the social media piece and, and, and the cell phone. Like I said, you know, any concerns, let us know. And like I said, in, in the near future, students will be um, giving information on where we're going to go with our cell phone policy. The final thing I want to mention is, uh, again, uh, talking about social media and talking about uh, some concerns that kind of came across my desk was, um, I guess, the canceling of school due to weather. Um, I've been informed, and again, as I said, I've, I have not seen this, but I've been informed that uh, some parents are putting on um, just, just some comments, and I'm sure don't, they don't mean no harm or whatnot about uh, you know school is closed and why was it closed, or and probably other days where maybe school uh, should be closed. Um, I'm going to say that probably one, one of the most difficult things about uh, this position is uh, when we got a storm coming. Um, whether or not we keep school open uh, or do we close school. I know on uh, Valentine's Day this year was probably the worst day I'll say that we had. Uh, that was no brainer. Seven o'clock in the morning, it was it was a full fledged storm. Uh, it was pretty much going. We, you know, we knew it was going to last for all day. Very easy one. Um, some of the other ones are, are are tough tough to uh, tough to make a call on, and especially when you know that. You know, the storm is, is supposed to strike at 10 o'clock or 10.30. And I mean, now with technology, I guess the good part of technology is the fact that uh, we, we get that information. And sometimes it's accurate, sometimes it's not. So, I mean, those are the days that, that you know, what do we do? I mean, at, at, at 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning, it, it's, it's fairly nice. Uh, we know it's going to be ugly uh, probably around Reese's time, around 11 o'clock. Um, you know, what do we do? Um, the one thing I really hate is is when we get in school and then we got to... Uh, uh, dismiss kids early um, and we've had to do that uh, and 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 that's fine we will deal with it but that's something that that I, I want to stay away from as much as possible so I mean right now I'll just let everyone know that um, um, the, the the Department of Education and our school board they, they have a, a AMAC forecast that, that we're asked to follow uh, along with that you know, I know there's uh, the rain forecast I mean there's Environmental Canada you know, there's times I've chatted with the Department of Highways. You know, I've I've chat with Ramius. That that's a little bit of a different one as well, because sometimes the weather is is, is very different from Ramia to here. Um, the um, you know, uh, um, there's times I've called Port of Bass and find out what schools are doing there. Um, you know, there's times I've called the school board and and just explain situations. So it's not something that I just kind of look out. Oh yeah, we're going to close school or, or the forecast come for this and then we kind of relax that day. It, it, it is very difficult um, to do and I mean there's times we've closed school and uh, especially in the afternoons it has happened this year uh, that, that we could have had school. Um, but I mean as we always say that, that safety is number one and uh, when it's all said and done we do not lose a lot of school this year I think right now with the power and everything else we're at about four and a half or five and a half days uh, we've missed. Um, you know, and, and there's a lot of schools in the province uh, that, that lose a lot more than that. Not that that, that is right or wrong or to compare those, but uh, you know, just to let everyone know. So, you know, once again, if there's any concerns with with school being uh, open or closed, but if you know, if there's ever any concerns with uh, school being open uh, or closed, I mean, give us a call, uh, uh, and we'll certainly uh, not much more I can say. I guess what I've already said there, but. Um, 
you know, again, it, it, it is a difficult call and it's not one we take lightly. Um, you know, Mr. Aaron and myself, uh, we, we usually make that final call on, uh, on, on whether uh, we're going to have school or not. Um, and there, there's times that, I, um, you know, Jim comes to work at uh, 7 30 in the morning. There's times I've waited till he's gotten down there and, and I've called him and said, look, I mean, what, what do you think about the situation? You know, uh, you know, in regards, you know, is, is a slip around the school. Uh, I mean, uh, obviously, all of our entrances and exits have to be shoveled out. So, I mean, like, like a lot of things are, are taken into consideration before we make that call. And uh, you know, and, and as as the community is well aware, parents are well aware. That, I mean, there's times like like quarter eight we've canceled school, uh, and that's an hour before school opens. And and it's nice to have it done like seven or quarter after seven. Uh, but where we are, a small community, and uh, you know. We don't live that far from the school, uh, you know. I mean, I mean, quarter to eight, even eight o'clock, and I, I, I try to stay away from that one as well. But if if that's the time we got to use, uh, uh, so be it. So, just let everyone know that uh, you know about what we, we we do with regards to uh, to school closures. I mean, that's not much different than what's being done around our province. Um, you know, a lot of schools, and I know, like in St. John's area, uh, they got a lot of busing and busing for a long distance. They will go by the forecast. I mean, they, they've canceled school for, for half a day a day, and the storm did not uh, um, occur, I guess, as what it was planned to be or, or anticipated to be. So, you know, um, <clears throat> excuse me, it, it is a tough one, and, uh, you know, we hope that, uh, you know, we, we, we do right by that, and, um, you know, um, we just hope that there's no more storms this year and, and school will uh, continue as normal, we'll say. So right now that's it for this time. Uh, we'll certainly do this again if we can before Easter. If not, I'm sure we'll be right after Easter. Um, and as I've said now a number of times, uh, if, if any concerns, any questions, uh, you know where we're to. Uh, feel free to give us a call and um, we'll do this again. Thank you.